Hello again to all my amazing listeners tuning in out there. Welcome to Fractured Poet, a podcast for all of you poetically insane individuals who love getting lost in the art of poetry. Podcasting from Ontario, California, I am your host, Katrina Wisniewski, just another person in the world obsessed with words, striving to make sense of it all. Today's episode is all about those typical anti-love poems, complete opposite of the love poems that I have, obviously, with a name like anti-love, right? Anyways, I figured I would share some poems that talk loads of trash on love because the next episode will be completely covered with more love poems. I will get into the reciting part of the show by reading a poem called A Day to Forget. I remember when sitting under the sun felt good, soaking up the warm, bright rays of sunshine, having not a care in the world, paying attention to absolutely nothing at all, just enjoying each other's company. I remember when saying I love you meant more than life itself. Now my days consist of darkness as I try to forget the day when you changed. This was another one of my random off-the-wall poems. There was no personal feeling dedicated and smothered into this piece, just random words put together and formed an anti-love poem. I can't say what I was thinking at the time or what made me think up this poem, and like most of my excuses, it just came out. Which leads me to another poem that came out of my twisted, poetically insane mind. Here is Bittersweet Love. Understanding nothing of this love, crying tears and broken hearts, sweet love is not. What a bitter love. The taste of his lips, so sweet, just enough to cover the bitter words. Staring into his eyes, those eyes of stone, superficial and cold, love is pathetic. Such a lack of passion, no affection, just a taste of betrayal. I should have listened. Falling in love? What's that? What a bitter, sweet love. Ouch. I felt that all over just by reading it. Almost made me believe that I actually experienced something like this. But then again, maybe I have. I wrote this poem back in 2018 sometime. Another explanation of having no reason of how to explain the reasons behind this poem. No personal connections, just a bunch of words flowing together, creating an outcome that was out of my control. It's weird how I can think up certain topics and emotions, not having any relation. And to have it go where it goes without me realizing it, it's crazy. I honestly don't know the direction I am going in until the poem is done. Maybe not for all of my poems, because some of the poems I have written do have specific intentions and directions, but others truly do not have a specific path. It goes where it goes, and that's how it ends. I can run with one phrase I've had stuck in my head, and it can turn into something completely different and opposite of what my initial thought was when coming up with the phrase by itself. I let the words guide me at one point or another. I don't think. I don't put any effort in thinking up certain words. Whatever comes out is the end result. Once the poem is done, I read it over, and that's when I do any altering if needed. And just talking about it in this way is mind-boggling. I mean, explain and describe the way my mind words things while composing poetry I don't really have the words. I'm not saying that I don't think at all when it comes to writing poems, because obviously there is thought there. I mean, a poem is being thought up. But once I start writing, once I get going, if there's one phrase or one word, honestly, I just let my my hand do all of the writing. Whatever words come out is what it comes out. And Once the poem is finished, I can go back, look at the poem. Okay, that doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Okay, reword this. Okay, what did I mean here? That's when I start 
reconstructing things. It may not be until years later or even a couple minutes later or seconds later, but I said that I don't think. I mean, I do and I don't. So I just wanted to kind of elaborate on that too because I realized what I said. But anyway, the next poem I am going to read is called Remember. If only I could remember what it tastes like to be loved by you. To remember the way you looked at first glance and how I fell madly in love. No recollection. I do remember how the sunlight was captured inside your eyes, a memory I know I mustn't forget. It pains me, however, to know that I cannot have you. A scorched heart, unattended and burned to a crisp. If only I can remember to forget what it was like to be loved by you. After reading this poem, it almost sounds like one of those previous relationships you completely erased from your memory because it was so horrible. So the if only I can remember thing and using the word remember throughout the entire poem could mean that this person is ready to look at this past relationship in the eye and finally be done with it rather than avoiding it. Towards the end, though, I think that's what was happening. He or she finally started to remember what it was like to be loved by their ex and wish they could forget. And sometimes when we revisit those certain memories or relationships, those memories tend to stick for a little while, almost as if it just happened. The torturous games our mind and memories play on us, especially when we have already moved on and actually remembered to forget. The next and last poem I will recite for you is called In the Dark. In the dark, I only yearned for you, reminiscing what it was like to feel the warmth of your skin, to inhale the sound of your voice. In the dark, I cry tears that ache for your presence, afraid of losing essence of you. I don't want to forget. Please don't make me forget. In the dark, I suddenly feel alone. In the dark, you no longer exist. I have to admit, after reading this poem out loud, it does sound a little creepy. However, maybe that is the point. I can't tell you where my mind was when I came up with this idea for this particular poem. I honestly don't know where it came from. It does not pertain to any situations I have been in, nor do they describe anything I've ever felt relationship-wise. There have been times where I have felt alone and in the dark, so if that's the case, I guess I can kind of see where the words in this poem originated from. It sounds like this person is trying to reach out to someone he or she thought was going to be there through thick and thin. Sounds like a moment of collapse or even depression. A time when he or she needed someone to be that light at the end of the tunnel. Who knows? It's just a poem after all. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am afraid that is where the show ends. To those of you who are always tuning in and even those who are just joining in, I hope you liked what you heard and tune in next time. You can catch this and future episodes at anchor.fm's forward slash fractured poet. This episode of fractured poet was written and produced by me, Katrina Wisniewski. Music by Alternative Rock Volume 1 and Rock Electronica Volume 4 from freeplaymusic.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at fractured poet. And as always, thanks for listening and until next time.